quick update on what I'm doing. I've got one of these cheap uh, Chinese diesel heaters that I'm using to heat this workshop or take the edge off this workshop. And we're trying to recover some of the heat. There's a lot that goes out the wall through the exhaust. So I'm trying to recover some of it. So I've built this sand battery, basically a big uh, oil drum or ex fruit drum in, drum in this case. Um, it's filled with sand, filled with bricks to add like a thermal mass to it. And then we've got seven meters of exhaust coiled through and it goes out the wall. So the idea is to take as much heat out of the exhaust as possible, leave it in the sand battery, and then that slowly leaches it like a heat sink overnight, keep the temperature up a little bit, make it a little bit more comfortable in here. Um, we've had some failures, we've had some success. Uh, when we started, it was a 25 mil bore exhaust, six meters of that, and it was run okay for probably the first couple of runs. But then when you run it on the low speed, it just sooted up uh, and it became apparent that it wasn't gonna work. So we scrapped that idea. And we've gone over to a 38 mil exhaust now. Um, there's actually seven meters of that now. And that's working fine. There's no soot in the exhaust. Um, condensation hasn't been a problem. It just drips out at the end. So, so far, so good. Um, the sand's wet. I used wet sand because it was cheaper. That was a mistake. Should have used kiln dried sand. Um, so if you're gonna try this project, kiln dried, it packs easier. Um, this one you can see I'll show you when it contracts as it's drying out, it leaves voids. So uh, that was a, a mistake. So we're going to rectify that. Um, but uh, the other day I run this for about eight hours. Uh, no issues with the heater. Um, but after turning it off at night, came back in the morning about half past seven and we still had, this was still warm. It was warm to the touch. And in the center there, we had about nearly 30 degrees temperature. I've got a void in the middle to let this moisture out. But what I want to do now, I want to make a couple of modifications. I'm going to take this sand out. I'm getting too impatient. I want to take this sand out. I'm going to dry it. Um, we've got a bit of good weather and then it's going to turn a bit rubbish again. So I'm going to try and get this dry, speed that process up, dry the bricks out. Um, I may shorten the exhaust because the last coil doesn't really get that hot. So I'm wondering if it's, it's, if it's pointless having it and just have the six meters. Also, um, the top coal's about here, the bottom coal's, or the next one down, is about there. So I've, I've got the spacing wrong. It, there's, there's more in the bottom. When I, was, when I was building it, I tried to guesstimate how, how many coals I would need, but I think I've gotten too many at the bottom. So I wanna strip this apart, pull the bricks out, dry the sand out, reposition the coals as a, when it goes back together. I'm gonna mark where they are so it's more evenly spaced, because at the moment we get a lot of heat from here down, and then here not so much, but there's one coal there, and then the next one's about here. So that would explain that. Um, and then we re rebuild it with dry sand, then hopefully get some proper, proper test runs in it and give you some numbers. But that's the plan for today. I'm going to pull all this apart again. So if it's leaving voids here, there's a high potential it's going to leave voids around these bricks where it's not been packed in as it was wet. It sort of forms clumps. Um, yeah, kiln dry would have been so much better. See that there, it's coming away from the edges. Um, We see what sort of soot's in here. Just a very light spatter, you can barely see it. So if we look at this coil spacing, that's there and you can see right down there, I think I've got the spacings wrong. There's too much gap between this top ring and the next one down. So I'm gonna reset them as best I can. But yeah, I'm gonna get this sand out now and it's basically going in as many wheelbarrows as I can find. And I've got some drums out there, buckets, whatever you want to call it, sit them in the sun, and hopefully that'll sort that out. There we go. There's an hour of my life I'm never going to get back. Um, still some remnants on there. It's not as wet as I thought it was going to be, but it was wetter than I'd hoped it would be, if that makes sense. Um, there was a bit there, probably about level where that rib is, where it was quite wet, but then as we got down to the first layer of bricks, it wasn't as bad, it wasn't good, it wasn't as bad. So right, that's out, I'm gonna dry this out now. Um, this is all out in the sun. And then once that's dry, I'll rebuild this. There was only four coils, so I might keep the length. I'm undecided about that bit, I'm not sure. But yeah, there was only actually four coils, so if I take too much out, but um, yeah, we'll see. I don't know about that one yet. The other thing I've done um, is I've set these coils six inches apart. This is some washing line. This is one continuous loop. 
I don't know if this is going to work, but I don't want to cut this because I'll get into trouble. <laughs> so the, I won't know whether this works until it's too late. So when this is full, full of sand, my idea is because it's thin, it will sneak past the sand. But I might have to chop it and do it each section. But however, that's a, a whole thing. Anyway, I'm going to put the bricks in now, start building this up. Um, it's just literally going to, I think there's about five in the bottom and then it'll be two and two and two and two and two to form like the central column. And then we'll push the sand in around it as we go. But now it's dry, it just, it, it goes in so much easier. Why I didn't do this in the first place, I don't know. But however, let me get some bricks in now. I'll lay them out and across the bottom underneath the first coil and then the rest will come up through the center. basically what I'm going to be doing. Just at the end of my reach, being a short house. Get that there, more sand. Keep checking the pipes, bricks, sand, check the pipes until we get right up there. So finally got this thing finished. Um, about a week, 10 days after I started the front end of this video, but as you can see, we're about an inch and a half down from the top now. It's completely dry, like dust it is, the sand is completely dry. So I've been waiting for, to do a couple of tests, but it's been warm, the, the, wet, the summer's coming. So, um, but tonight and tomorrow night, we're gonna go down to naught degrees, possibly minus. So what I wanna do, I've done a five, five hour run, do a five and a half hour run to get some heat into here. I wanna see what the heat's doing. See if it's a bit more even now because our coils are six inches apart. I want to see what the temperature's going in. I can measure it with a thermal imaging. Um, it's not great at doing temperature, but it's a bit reflective. But it'll give us a pretty good indication of how hot it is. And then on the outside, we'll measure it, and then we can kind of see where or how much heat's been absorbed by this by this thing. But it means it's, it feels warm, so that's good. Um, even the output exhaust and I didn't chop this down this is still seven meters so it's a, there's plenty of uh, exhaust in there but yeah that's quite warm 50 degrees it's getting better. Oh, 61 so that the drum it's, feels toasty actually there doesn't look to be a lot coming out the top and then there's there's more of a spread of heat because you can see it kind of there. But let's get the top off of this. Right. There you go, look. You can see where the, the coil is, because that's just as it goes out. See it there? We get temperature there. That's 45 degrees. On top of that's 36. And even there, the sand's 20, 26 degrees. So it's warming up. It does take a while though. So we have a quick look. Five hours, 40 minutes. This has been on for, and. It's been running on three all that time, and the combustion temperature 219 degrees. 38, is that peak at? 39, 40 degrees. Seems to be about the maximum. I'm going to turn this off now. That's been on for five hours and 50 minutes. And it's half past seven. 
So we'll come back tomorrow morning and see um, what residual heat's left in this, if any. Hoping there's quite a bit. Because uh, I think that's that was my hope that in the during the evening it'll just keep some warmth in here and then if you've got a lot of jobs on during the day it's quicker to warm up. But it is just feel I mean it feels like a, a nice radiator. Uh, I'm hoping that this top gets hotter, but we'll see. We're getting to summer now, so there's probably the end of the testing for this, but maybe next winter this might come into its own. But I will say that just having that on its own is more comfortable. And it doesn't warm this up to like 20 degrees like you'd hope. Um, but it's a lot warmer than not having it, especially if you've got it pointing at you. So you can actually function. But I'll switch off now and then we'll come back in the morning and see what's, see what's going on. But I think that's the end of this one for now. I don't think I'm going to do anything more to it. We have got any other bright ideas. I'll see you in the morning. I've come out to have a sneaky look. Curiosity was kind of getting the better of me, really. But you can see it's cold out, so it's not minus nine. I don't know where it's getting that from, but it's dark out. But there's still some, some heat in here. Some bits hotter than other. Other 16 degrees there. And then the side here, 22 degrees. It's 11.6 inside and 8.7 outside. It feels colder than that, but I've got to go with what it says. But there's definitely, um, you can feel the heat. It is cooling down. It still feels sort of, it's not radiator warm, but it, like there, it's quite warm. But see what it does in the morning, see if there's anything left. So this is 12 hours after switching this off, and it's about, outside it's about four and a half degrees. So if you see the wall. And then you can see there's still some residual heat in there, and it looks like the floor's still warmer. It's not baking hot. It doesn't feel particularly warm to the touch. So now this is finished. Uh, it wasn't the, the success I'd hoped it would have been. I mean, we are capturing heat. 200 and something goes in the thing and only 40 comes out. So we're, it's going somewhere and it in the morning it was still warm. So it wasn't hot, but it was still warm. So it is it's kind of doing what I wanted it to do, slowly release heat during, during the night. Um, and if you had it in a building, perhaps it was a bit better insulated, or I had any insulation, unlike this place, perhaps it would serve a bit better, it wouldn't cool down as quick, rapidly. Again, if you were using it every day, um, constantly rebuilt or refilling the heat up, it might work a bit, you know, even out a little bit better. Um, but other than that, what have we learned? The, uh, the exhaust, if you want to build one of these, don't bother with a 25 mil, or if you need to extend the exhaust on a van or, or whatever you're doing or your project, um, don't bother with a 25 mil, it's not that good. It's cheap, but it doesn't really work. Uh, that's seven meters long and it's 38 mil, inch and a half. And it seems to work fine. It's not affecting the combustion temperatures. Um, having condensation isn't a problem, even though it's a coal going up and it comes in at the bottom and goes up. Um, haven't had any problems with condensation. It runs exactly the same as it did with, this, with the smaller exhaust. So if you need to lengthen the exhaust, 38 mil or inch and a half. Sand battery, cheap diesel heater. Mm, kind of successful, kind of not. But hopefully you enjoyed this, this one. Uh, if you want to look at the other ones and see where I went wrong, some of the things I tried and failed, have a look at these videos here, and I'll see you on the next one.